our studios at Cardiac Radio inviting you to join us in this beautiful opportunity to pray, pray for the USA. And many people ask, why do we pray for the USA? Because First Cardiac Radio's headquarters are mainly in the USA, but also because we have the opportunity to pray for the beautiful environment that sustain the coordination of so many beautiful efforts on earth. So you're welcome to join us. Join us here at Kardec Radio. So we pray together in this beautiful works. And I'm sharing here with the groups. Many people ask beforehand, and I won't forget, especially spiritism and the spirit world around us to be with us as, as well. So join us, friends. And I'm not alone. We have here a beautiful friend, Greg Palma, right from Iowa. Thank you, Greg, for being with us. How are you? Sorry. Can you repeat somewhat? It was muted. I said, I'm glad to be with you and the Kardec Radio Mentors. Thank you so much. It's so beautiful what you're saying and your acknowledgement. And, you know, we acknowledge your spiritual works and your interest in spiritism as well. And, you know, Greg, you're an opera singer professional and you have decided to make your music a healing opportunity, right? Yes. You want to share a little more about that to the listeners? And viewers, please. Yes, my my music um, comes straight from my heart. I mean, I've been technically trained to sing properly and to get a to make a, a good quality sound. Uh, as my voice teacher at the University of Iowa would say, you have to make a very beautiful noise <laughs> thing. Um, so I have that in the background. But really, it's coming from, from my heart. And the goal of my singing, whether it is the singing of the sacred songs, which I enjoy singing, uh, or the what I call the singing passes, the celestial singing passes, both of them, the goal is to open the hearts to love, to open the heart chakra, to heal. And it is healing music, because music is the most powerful of the healing modalities, I believe. And, and this is a gift, I believe, that, that God gave to me. And this is my mission, is to share what I have to open the hearts of people. And um, I found Spiritism when I was in Brazil in 2013. Mm -hmm. And from there, my heart started opening up when I visited a spiritual healing center there. And since then, it, because I made that connection, it was clearer what my mission was. And each time I moved in that direction, it became stronger and stronger. Wow. So that's, I think, enough for me. Yeah, and, and you know, I remember when you came to the Chantilly, Virginia Spiritist Center in our 12th anniversary, and then you came back yeah. for another opportunity. And so beautiful because Leon Denis in the book Spiritism in the Arts, which we have a program every Tuesday with Fred Gouveia and Josana Vaz, they, they go through this book by Leon Denis that brings to us the awareness that the arts are for sublime reasons. And I was talking to friends the other day saying, you know, for the longest time on earth, we've used the arts just to the pleasures of the senses in a very dense and materialized way or materialistic way. Mm -hmm. And finally, we are awakening to allow the arts to help us spiritualize ourselves mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. exactly the arts <laughs> i mean there are um, 
in the Vedic tradition, which I spent a lot of time studying mm -hmm. and experiencing in meditation, there are many ways what they call to transcend, to go into into your into your heart, to go deep into the source of, of your creativity, go into the source of your being with a capital B. <laughs> you can do it through you can do it through visualization. You can do it through what they call yantras, which are pictorials mm -hmm. of, of, of transcending. You can do it through sound. Um, and any sound can take you in there. And you can do it through any of the senses. You can transcend through it. Um, through visual and through uh, sound are, are very powerful modalities to to transcend the, mm -hmm. the the very easy thing about the sound uh transcending is that you can actually close your eyes and that journey becomes even more profound because you're you're cut off from the the material world and you're just experiencing the sound level or what they call the mantra level of the sound a mantra is a, a particular sound that's used in meditation that has no meaning. So when you are pronouncing the mantra in your in your silence in your in your mind, you're not caught up on the meaning of the word going from and in, in contemplating different aspects. Of it. So the sound quality of the, the the music that I sing that doesn't have words, the one you that you heard me sing that the singing passes while you were giving the passes those have a particularly powerful aspect because they don't have the meaning and you're not thinking oh what a beautiful quality of you know you're thinking of jesus and you know we're singing like a, a hymn and jesus is mentioned and you contemplate jesus and then you remember about your mother and how she taught you and things like that. But with just the sound quality, then you're able to go much more deeply without mm -hmm. getting caught up on the intellectual and the contemplative level. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And, it, and we can feel the soothing vibrations as you speak because you cultivate that, right? And talking about that, Greg, you know, we're here in a live program. People, friends are joining us. And we're going to boost our inspiration for the prayer based on this message, 119 of the book, Our Daily Bread, by Emmanuel Toshiko Xavier, that is titled, Always Be of Assistance. It's exactly for the purpose of the question many people ask, why do we need to pray for the USA? Well, let's always be of assistance. That's the answer. Why not? Yes. Right? Exactly. So would you like to help us reading it? Yes, I'll be glad to read Thank it. you. Okay. Always be of assistance. But Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? Acts 21.13 one of the most dramatic passages of the Acts of the Apostles describes Paul of Tarsus' preparation to face the testimony that awaited him in Jerusalem. There is not a shadow of hesitation in the heroic soul of this fighter. As usual, his spirit is ready, but his companions are weeping and lamenting, eliciting a painful question that flows from the sensitive and valiant heart of this warrior of the gospel. In spite of his indomitable serene energy, Paul felt the lack of his friends as courageous as himself. His travel companions were sincerely ready for death. However, they did not know how to express the sentiments of a faithful soul. Weeping and lamenting never helps in moments of difficult testimony. Whoever weeps besides a friend in a precarious position undermines his or her endurance. Jesus wept in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was alone, but in Jerusalem, under the weight of the cross, he tells the kind woman, 
who were supporting him to stop their anguished tears. On the morning of the resurrection, he asked Magdalene to explain the reasons for her tears at the tomb. This, les this lesson is of great significance for all disciples. If a loved one has endured a necessary affliction for a long time, do not fall into useless desperation. Complaining solves nothing. Instead of embittering him or her with your tears, reach out. Thank you so much. You know, Greg, in this life I was born in Brazil. And it's interesting because I recall the time I was born in 72, a time in which my father working as a, in the IBM company, which is an American company. It's interesting, he used to travel here often and people used to love the United States in Brazil and admire the United States, really feeling like the whole world. But one day, the United States fall short in people's opinion. We're not, we don't need to outline why, but people know it. It's out there and people are like pointing fingers and like some are disappointed, other are, others are exactly doing this. They are sad and they are even desperate, like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Even with the current situation in so many ways, people are like, oh my gosh. And here's a lesson, desperation or accusations or complaining is not going to help. We need to reach out because we have received so much from the US. Even if we were born in other countries, historically the United States has given so much for so many centuries since the declaration. Well, I would say way before, if you read the book Renunciation by Emmanuel, we see the waves of migration from Europe to the United States showing to us that it became a shelter for the renewal of the planet. The dreams of a new civilization, new society renewed, free from prejudices, from persecutions. And now after all these gifts, we can't be disappointed or complain or feel desperate. I think Emmanuel is calling us. Come on, let's reach out. What do you feel, Greg? I see it too when I look at Facebook or if I spend a moment looking at the news, it's easy to be drawn into that complaining and it's easy to take a side and say, yes, uh, this person's right and this person's wrong and, and what's happened to our country. Um, I do believe it is an opportunity and God seems to be very patient with what's going on. I was contemplating this today. He seems to be very patient with everyone, particularly the ones that are the point of the complaints, <laughs> that he's giving them many opportunities to rethink their lives and rethink their positions and it <laughs> it is a, a wonderful thing to to be on the earth at this time because it's such a transformational time and it's it's been noted not only by spiritism but it has been noted by many masters from the east who have also said that this time is a time of change and a time of transformation to a golden age, an age where life will be transformed. Um, and it is inevitable. It is definitely inevitable. And I think we do need to have these, these weekly messages of hope because it's easy to forget the inspiration that we had 
um, just a few days ago and to try to remember it when we're caught in in the uh, in the frustration of saying well, now now what's happening now look what's happening it's gotten worse and it seems to be getting worse where in reality it's just more opportunities to turn it around and the kindness that's coming from our creator for this planet i think she he believe that it is truly a place that will be a glorious center for the world because it already inhabits the most of the population of the earth has connections with the united states in a very strong way and it really is like you say the brain of the planet so i i see it as a we just need to keep giving people the inspiration from these wonderful messages manual coming from chico xavier wonderful chico yeah it's so inspiring i mean that these luminaries have crossed our path it is so uplifting to me to read them coming from more of the eastern tradition and to be really blown away by the synchronicities between the two cultures of you know one calling it the age of enlightenment the other calling it a transformation of, to you know the next level up the regenerative world mm -hmm. i mean it is it is uh very hopeful when you when you see different traditions coming at it from different ways it gives you it it it, it fills you with more confidence that you know here's another yet another science which is saying the same thing like in a when they do uh, tests on a certain new drug or something and someone else independently corroborates what you are saying and it, it didn't come from them saying don't you think it it does this and you know they they followed their own uh, line of of investigation and they independently came up with the same thing and that's yeah. that's what we're seeing here so i, I find very i find it very hopeful yeah. and very inspired and I think what you're doing here, Vanessa, and the whole Kardec radio team and, and the mentors is, is really very important, extremely important for the United States. I, I, I congratulate you and the, and the huge, huge sacrifice that you personally take. I mean, you could turn on Kardec radio anytime and you're always on. And there's always tons of stuff to get inspired by. It's just, it's really, it's really wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we hope you can join us. We need to talk to have you join us as well in this teamwork effort. We have so many people helping us on the behind the scenes and in both realms, the team is big and, but we always need more. As you're saying, beautifully, like the patient, God's patience. So what is on our end to share the inspiration, right? Just to share, right? So that's why praying for the USA, praying, like asking for God's blessings for this nation to which we owe so much. And that deserves the best of our appreciation, hoping that, as you said, we're so interconnected that we need to, we can't sabotage ourselves. Wherever we're living in this planet, we're one. So when we pray for the USA, we're praying for the world because from here, bridges of friendship. So let us march towards this prayerful moment. And I know you as a beautiful professional singer and a singer of for spiritual healing and transformation you volunteered and you came up with this inspiration to sing at our prayerful moment so we're all yours okay Correct. Silent. 
silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. I'm speechless. I could feel it, and we thank you, Greg, for this prayerful moment. I'm sorry, I missed that. It's okay, but thank you. I, we, I'm speechless. We feel so inspired and so deeply connected to the heart of the Christ as Jesus Christ coordinates the efforts of the evolution of the planet. And let us just renew our hope. And as Emmanuel said, keep reaching out or be of greater assistance, whomever we are. Thank you, Silvio Tero, for being with us, and thank you, friends. Greg, thank you for your patience, for being here with us, and for bringing the healing music and the comments that, that just add to the dream of a balanced brain for a balanced planet. Yes. Yes. We are very happy here thank you may jesus bless you deeply thank you you too thank you so stay there greg and okay. friends you know we thank you too this is prayer for the usa it's a moment just to call us to stop for a moment listen to the voice of the angels the spirits join forces with them and reach out, no complaining, no pointing fingers, no desperation. After all, the good spirits with Jesus know that this brain is the brain. We need it. Let it be harmonized. Until next Friday, in one more prayers for the USA. A big hug to you, friends. And until next week.